Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. Unfortunately, the original copy of this video was uploaded and I didn't realize I didn't open my voice meter software so the mic didn't work. Uh, so yeah, I spent I spent like uh, that whole time making that video just for it to not have any audio. But um, it's not a big deal to remake it. Um, I kind of want to talk about the Charlotte Hornets because... This is a team that has the potential to be the next, like, NBA dynasty. And I know that's really weird to say, considering uh, they have one of the worst records in the NBA right now. Uh, you know, they're 13-41. and 41. Obviously, they're they're not even fighting for a play-in spot. Like, they're, they're fighting for a draft pick at this point. And th this team is very interesting to me because I feel like their record doesn't indicate how good they actually are. Um... You know, Brandon Miller's coming into his own. Brandon Miller has been a stud for the Hornets all year. He's shooting 44% from the field, 38% from three on 16 and a half a game. Um, obviously, LaMelo Ball is, it feels like he's injured all the time, but um, he's a, this is a team that if they can get healthy and, you know, retain the guys that are worth retaining, you're looking at a potential dynasty. Uh, with the Charlotte Hornets and I know that sounds kind of crazy right because their records not good they their records never really been good they haven't even really been a good basketball team for most of my life okay but in the past couple years they've been hitting on draft picks they hit on LaMelo Ball they hit on Brandon Miller they hit on Miles Bridges they hit on Mark Williams uh, this is a team that is going to be a very very good team and very hard to beat uh, in the, the coming years, in the next two to three years, this is a team that could really make a mark in the NBA. And the reason I say that is because uh, I was very fascinated around the trade deadline. Uh, the idea that the Hornets were tr like openly trying to trade Miles Bridges. Uh, and then on the day of the trade deadline, Miles Bridges came out and basically told the Hornets front office or the Hornets GM, like, I'm not waiving my no trade clause. So you can try to trade me, but it's not going to happen. Um, and honestly, I feel like that speaks volumes to Miles Bridges and his want to actually stay with the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, he just had uh, three charges dropped uh, in regards to the domestic dispute he had last year. Uh, he didn't play all of last season, but this is a guy who averages 20 points per game, who is not only good on the offensive end of the floor, but is also good on the defensive end of the floor. And you're noticing this team is getting better as a whole. Like Mark Williams is like an, a defensive anchor in the making, like if he's not already. Um, this team is very good defensively. They have a lot of young talent. And so I guess you could say I was a little, uh, I was a little appalled at the idea that the Hornets were trying so adamantly to get rid of Miles Bridges. Um, there was apparently a deal on the table from the Dallas Mavericks. I'm sure the Houston Rockets got in on this because they've been looking for a guy that they can maybe build around to add to that, that three spot that's still within their timeline. But the thing is, the Hornets are a team that I think just needs to keep it together. Um, the reason I say that is because this team has the potential to be a dynasty level team. And I, the reason I say that is because this is a team that has all the right pieces in all the right places. Uh, they have LaMelo Ball at point guard, who's an already an all-star. He's going to make a lot of all-star teams. I feel like Brandon Miller, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, and Mark Williams will all follow in his footsteps of being an all-star at some point in time. Uh, but the reason the Charlotte Hornets case is so special is because they have a very, very good wing combination between Brandon Miller and Miles Bridges. And there's a lot of teams in the league that would love to have that. If you haven't noticed, all the teams that have like really good wing players are playoff teams, right? You got the Boston Celtics with Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum. You have the situation in uh, Los Angeles, the Clippers, right? They, like the Hornets have a little bit of what the Clippers are going on with, right? Only like, I guess you could say the great value version of it. You know, the Clippers have Kawhi, PG, and James Harden. The Hornets could have LaMelo Ball. Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller, uh, plus Mark Williams. And while I understand like there's still development room in here, Brandon Miller has been playing his ass off this year. I, I picked him up in the last pick of my fantasy draft this year because nobody took him. And uh, let me tell you, that was a big move. Uh, I got Kawhi Leonard also as kind of a steal. Uh, but it, it's just the idea 
teams with those kind of combinations, a good two guard and a good three guard or a three wing. Uh, Miami is another team. They have Tyler Hero and, J- and Jimmy Butler. All these teams that have combinations like that are already in the playoffs. And there's a lot of teams that are going to make the playoffs that wish they had wings on the level of Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller. You look at a team like the Atlanta Hawks. How long have they been fucking trying to get it right? For a long time, right? Uh, you look at the Pacers. The Pacers need a three and D wing. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers could really benefit from a 3 and D wing. Uh, there's there's just so many teams that could benefit from wing players that that's why I find it so appalling that the Hornets wanted to get rid of Miles Bridges and honestly in a way I feel like Miles Bridges by not waiving his no trade clause saved the Charlotte Hornets from themselves because I feel like if the Charlotte Hornets could have traded Miles Bridges at the deadline they would have done it and I get the off-court stuff is a distraction, but Miles Bridges has been playing amazing. Uh, this is a team that I feel like if they if they don't offer Miles Bridges an extension in the offseason, they're going to regret it for the rest of their lives. And the reason I say that is because this is a team where having Miles Bridges on your roster versus not having him on your roster is the difference between your team being just a good team and your team being a great team. And... You know, same thing, like, if you have two guys that can put the ball in the hole and are good at it, you have dynasty potential in the NBA, okay? You look at a team like the Warriors, how long did they do a reign of terror in the NBA, right? Like, if you've got a good, two really good scoring dudes on your roster, you don't get rid of them, especially when you have LaMelo Ball at point guard, you know? It's just, it's amazing to me that this team was really open to trading those guys, uh, or at least Miles Bridges anyway, but they also made some really good moves at the deadline. They got rid of Gordon Hayward's contract, ended up getting, uh, what's his name, Terrence Mann, I think, I don't know if I'm saying that correct, but um, they got Terrence Mann, uh, you know, they, granted, they did take on Davis Bertans, but it's just the idea, like, this is a team that's creating cap space, you know, they got rid of Terry Rozier for Kyle Lowry, who they're not going to bring back, they're going to let him walk walk and they'll have that's more cap space they're gonna have you know they they freed up a shit ton of cap space by getting rid of Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward so they have Grant Williams now like (coughs) this is a team that I feel like as time goes on they're gonna get better and team players are gonna want to go play there you know I get that uh, Charlotte maybe doesn't have the appeal of a a Miami or a New York or a California or even a Las Vegas, but it, it just the idea like it it would appear as if the rookies they have enjoy playing there, and it's very rare that it happens that you even draft rookies that actually want to play for you. You know, like for example, Zion Williamson got picked by the Pelicans when everybody knows he wants to be a New York Knick and it's still pretty self-evident to this day that Zion Williams does Zion Williamson does not want to play ball there. He does not care about being there. And, you know, most teams get to keep their rookies for maybe 7 years, uh, you know, maybe 7 8 years before they move on to another team. And I feel like in the next two years here, the Hornets are going to be a perennial playoff team. If they're not a perennial playoff team, they're going to, at the very least, be a perennial play-in team. And they're not going to be an easy out. You know, they, they play defense very well. Their numbers simply don't um, show how good of a team they are. Like, you would only know how good a, a, of a team Charlotte could be or is based on watching them play. Um, they're, they're one team that I just feel like their record simply doesn't indicate how good they actually are. They're a damn good defensive team. They're going to be a really good offensive team in the next couple of years. And I just feel like the the front office, if they let Miles Bridges walk and they don't bring him back, it's going to be an, an all-time fuck-up. Because I'm just going to keep it a buck. If you keep Brandon Miller and Miles Bridges together with LaMelo Ball and Mark Williams, you have dynasty potential. You know, anytime you have like a good combination like that, a good three and a good two, you can go places. And I don't think it's just amazing to me because I don't think they realize just how much the rest of the league would love to have a, a, a combination like that. You know, you look at what Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown became and, you know, what the Clippers are when Paul George and and Kawhi Leonard are healthy, right, with a James Harden who I I think LaMelo Ball is is already a better player than James Harden. So, you know, I get like LaMelo Ball is injured all the time, but when LaMelo Ball plays, he's, he's putting up 30 points a game almost. So... 
obviously that that would probably drop a little bit, you know, with Miles Bridges, Brandon Miller, and Mark Williams all getting minutes. But this is a team that I I really really worry the the front office is gonna fuck it up uh, because this is a team that should keep all, all the young players it has. Brandon Miller is been so good for them that like it's it's actually shocking people I mean it doesn't shock me because even if you look at my mock drafts from before the NBA draft I had Brandon Miller go into the Hornets religiously I never changed my stance on that right and I, it just like a lot of people were saying they were going to take Scoot Henderson and I'm like why the fuck would they take Scoot Henderson <laughs> like they they already have an influx of guards on their roster you know they James Book Knight doesn't even fucking play you know they have Terry Rozier they have LaMelo Ball they don't need another wing what they need is some length and some size and they got that in Brandon Miller so I think Brandon Miller has been very good I'm not shocked I know a lot of people are it seemed like a lot of people weren't really high on him in the draft because of the the murder case and the the the, the gun situation going on with Brandon Miller, but this is a team that if they keep it together, if they bring back Miles Bridges, they keep Brandon Miller, they keep, they already have LaMelo Ball locked in for a long time, you, you keep Mark Williams, right, like if you keep these guys, you might be able to fuck around in free agency and get yourself a solid power forward, which they do have Grant Williams now, but this is a team that could fuck around and keep the guys they got and, you know, maybe get that extra piece they need in free agency and be a a championship contending team down the road. And for the Charlotte Hornets, right, it feels like they've been bad for most of my life. So if you have this opportunity to have, you know, draft players that actually want to stay there, why would you trade them, you know, or, or attempt to trade them? I get that Miles Bridges is maybe not great for publicity, But, you know, the the fact of the matter is, man, there's at a certain point, I feel like you should be when when you're an NBA GM. It's one thing if a player is constantly a problem off the court, right? They're getting into trouble. uh, It's like every other week, it's something else, right? Like, but the thing is, as a as a GM, your your job is to make basketball decisions, not personal personal decisions. You know, oh, I don't like this guy because of X, Y, and Z. Okay, you can absolutely despise a player, you know, for their moral values or whatever they do, but still acknowledge that on the basketball court they're a disgusting fucking player. Um, yes, there are certain instances where uh, it's so bad that how well you play doesn't matter, but it's just the idea. If I'm the Hornets, I'm trying to keep this core together. Uh, if they don't re-sign Miles Bridges in the offseason, they're going to let him walk to another team, and that other team is going to love him. You know, like the Dallas Mavericks already wanted him. There's a there's a lot of teams that would love themselves a Miles Bridges right now. And I just feel like, I, I honestly think it hurts how many championships they could win if they don't bring back Miles Bridges in unrestricted free agency. Um, he's going to get offers. He's going to get offered a lot of bread. Luckily for the Hornets, they have his bird rights, so they can offer him as much money as they think is, you know, humanly possible for him, or they can offer him the most money compared to anyone else. But it's just the idea, like, this is a guy that I think you keep. Uh, and you know, with how good they are in defense, how, how competitive they are, uh, this is a team that simply the numbers don't match how good they are. And, I know it's a, a stretch to say like, oh, well, they, they could be a dynasty. They could be better than this team or that team. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they are a team that could be Golden State Warriors level. Um, I know that's kind of a stretch. But LaMelo Ball plays a lot of the same way as Curry does. Granted, Curry's a better shooter than LaMelo Ball. But you have LaMelo Ball who, who could be Steph Curry-esque. And you have two really good wings. So this is a team that I think just needs to keep it together. They need to uh, try to develop Brandon Miller more, Mark Williams more. They they're a great defensive team. Uh, They're not actually they're not great. They're not they're not bad, but they're not good either. Like they they have individual guys on this team that are good at defense. I'm actually curious what is Charlotte's defensive rating this year because uh, they have some good. Okay, their defensive rating is almost dead last. That's that's not very good. So they're not good as a team on defense, but. I really think the numbers don't show how good they can be. Um, Like Miles Bridges, Mark Williams, Brandon Miller. These are all guys that are capable of being good defenders if they're not already good defenders. And it's just going to take some time for it to develop. I know like this year their defensive rating is ass, so is their offensive rating. But this is a team that in the next two or three years, if you're in the Eastern Conference, you're going to have to look out for. And 
One thing I might add here is the one good thing about Miles Bridges is, you know, you don't have to trade for him. You know, like when you're in small markets, like if you're an Indiana uh, Indiana Pacers or if you're a Charlotte Hornets or an Atlanta Hawks or a San Antonio Spurs, these small market teams, getting a player that actually wants to stay there is very, very rare. Okay. At least in this case, it's obvious Miles Bridges, I think wants to be there. You know, it's at least you're not in a situation like Indiana where, you know, you have to trade for a guy and pray to God that he enjoys playing there. Um, even though I think, I think Pascal Siakam will resign with the Pacers. It's just the idea. If you're the Charlotte Hornets, right? Why would you even risk or even, uh, you know, uh, I guess you could say, give thought to the idea of trading a guy like Miles Bridges, who obviously wants to be there. That that doesn't make sense to me, considering this is a team that doesn't have the luxury of being a hot free agent destination. I think if you have players and you're a small market team, if you have guys that actually want to stay there and play there and you know develop there, I think you keep them. Much like Kyle Kuzma with the Washington Wizards. You know, Kyle Kuzma had the option to go to Dallas during the trade deadline. I don't think people know that, but Kyle Kuzma wanted to stay with the Washington Wizards, so they didn't trade him. Uh, but you know, the, like if if he wanted to go to Dallas, the Wizards were going to trade him to Dallas. So just the idea. This this team is going to be very good. They're fun to watch. If you haven't watched the Charlotte Hornets game, I highly recommend it. Um, they, it just it's exciting. It's exciting basketball to watch, especially with Brandon Miller coming into his own. Miles Bridges looks to be very very good. Could be a perennial All Star one day. Um, but down the road, I think we're going to look back at this particular video one day and say, yeah, I was right. <laughs> like Miles Bridges, not waiving his no trade clause, I think saved the Charlotte Hornets from themselves. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. I can't wait to see what this team becomes because there's a lot of teams like even the Detroit Pistons have been trying to hit on all their draft picks. And, you know, only recently has Jaden Ivey looked like the guy that they drafted, you know, so, you know, they have J- uh, Jalen Duran, they have Cade Cunningham, they have Jaden Ivey. They're a team that still, I think, doesn't have it together anywhere near as much as the Hornets do. So that's something to look forward to. But keep this in mind, like teams that usually have duos like that have dynasty potential and that's what I think about the Hornets so tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below a like helps me out subscribe if you guys want to see more I'm the fast break report and I'm out of this motherfucker peace guys